research vessel Melville just returned uh, to San Diego after being away for about two and a half years. And during that period, we had on the order of 27 different science programs with different science parties and different objectives every time. And some of our missions were focused on physical oceanography, some on biological, some on geology and atmospheric physics, all sorts of stuff. We've made a couple of really fantastic discoveries aboard the Melville during this period. One of these great discoveries was uh, the observation, really the first observation ever, of active volcanic eruptions in the deep ocean. The Melville used a robot submersible called Jason, deployed on the back deck of the Melville here, and went down about 3,000 meters and observed for the first time ever a violent eruption in the deep sea. So that's something that you, in fact, you can only look at and observe in the water because of the, the dampening effects of the water slows down a lot of the eruption uh, physics so that uh, you can get right next to the vent and watch these explosions happen. If you're in land, you'd be blown to bits. That was pretty neat because uh, we saw things that no one would have ever predicted. Things like lakes of molten sulfur underwater and buoyant bubbles of liquid CO2 that came out of vents and went up. I think it was very noteworthy in that the ship operated continuously except for uh, maintenance periods. Uh, it met every scheduled commitment. We did major maintenance to the ship while it was out, added a very uh, complex uh, sonar system to it to map the bottom of the oceans. Uh, and we did all that overseas while the ship was gone. And uh, there were a lot of new things studied that hadn't been studied before. The last cruise in the Bering Sea was a part of a series to study the biology of that area. And this was a period of time they had not been out, been able to collect data uh, in the fall like this, uh, August, late August, early September. So we were able to get them, get them data that uh, they didn't have otherwise to complete the study of the uh, fisheries ecology uh, in that area. So it's not uncommon for Melville to be in the Antarctic right near the ice edge or uh, in the Bering Sea. Uh, I mean, she spanned that whole distance, this cruise period. When you think about all the major issues that face us as Californians and, and Americans and even citizens of this planet right now, things like global climate change, well, those are big problems. And a lot of the answers that we need to have come from the oceans. The only way that we can get out there and make the sorts of observations and measurements we need so that we can understand these processes is to go out on a ship like the Melville and spend the money that it takes to get out there so that we can get the answers that we need to address some of these big problems. The Melville uh, is celebrating its 40th birthday and uh, I think its keel was laid 40 years ago. And it's approaching sort of the end of its expected lifespan. 40 years is a long time for a ship. But uh, walking around the Melville today is, uh, it came back to San Diego. And what really impresses me is uh, how well maintained the ship is. When you look around, uh, it's spotless. Uh, the instrumentation on board works great. I mean, the people here have taken great pride in keeping the ship in great condition and keeping all the instruments modern. Uh, you know, time marches onward, new things are invented, better ways of making observations are figured out. And through that 40 year span of time, we've kept Melville in great shape. So despite the fact that it's the oldest ship in the fleet, 40 years old, I would say that it's still one of the most capable ships in the world.